Now, Lebanon's Prime Minister has announced the government won't repay foreign currency debt worth over a billion dollars. In a televised speech, Hassan Deb also promised to work on a plan to protect people's deposits. The default covers a small part of the $91 billion it owes to foreign creditors. Lebanon's debt is more than 170% of its economic output, one of the heaviest burdens in the world. Today we face a huge obligation, a debt of $1.2 billion, which is due in two days. Our conscience mandates we must act with integrity to protect our national interest and our people. But our hard currency reserves have reached a critical low. As a result, Lebanon is forced to default the forthcoming March 9 obligation on the Eurobond. These funds must be channeled to secure the basic necessities for the Lebanese people. Zeyna Khoda has more on the announcement from Beirut. The Prime Minister making it clear that this was not an easy decision, but the decision had to be taken in the interests of the country and the people. Hassan Tieb addressing the nation, telling the Lebanese people that the country, the state, doesn't have the money to pay back its debt. The first time in Lebanon's history it is defaulting on its debt. He mentions the foreign reserves, saying that the foreign reserves, the foreign currency, it's dwindling. The country doesn't have have enough money to secure the basic needs of the people. Lebanon needs $10 billion to import just the basic uh, needs of fuel, medicine, wheat. So the government has decided to use whatever money is left for these basic needs instead of uh, servicing a debt, which he called a really a heavy burden on the state. He called the situation unprecedented, extraordinary times, uh, addressing the people, telling them that uh, in many ways to expect uh, even more difficult days ahead, telling them that you have resisted in the past and there's going to be challenging times ahead. This is a, a relatively new government. He blamed previous governments, but this government was appointed by the political class which has been governing this country for three decades. So not good news uh, and, and Lebanon's uh, financial situation really entering a new phase. Louis Habaika is a professor of economics at Notre Dame University in Beirut and joins me now from the Lebanese capital. Good to have you with us on the programme, sir. I mean, was this a default waiting to happen or could Lebanon have avoided this? Well, I think, you know, I really I never expected to live uh, into such a bad time, let's say, to read uh, about Lebanon's defaulting. Uh, you know, it's the result of uh, mismanagement accumulated over decades. And uh, the Prime Minister's speech uh, really described the situation without giving solutions. Uh, obviously, he inherited such a bad situation, but still, you know, for me uh, to listen uh, or, or to know that Lebanon has defaulted, it's very tough. Uh, I, I think that there are lots of information that uh, probably he should have been more transparent about. For example, he said the reserves of central banks are too low. How low they are? Uh, a few weeks ago, the governor of central bank said that we have $30 billion of reserves. Is, it too, is this too low? If we, had, if we have $30 billion, I think we should be paying the 1.2 billion. If we have much less, how much do we do, ha we do have? Um, uh, the speech is sure. a good speech, uh, of course, yes. It's, 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 it's difficult, obviously, uh, when, you're, when you're listening to it, but therefore, I I if he is sort of being scarce with the truth and there is now a default I in operation, what does that actually mean for the central bank and, and the financial works or working uh, of keeping the country financially afloat? I think we'll have uh, more problems because if the default has happened following an agreement with the creditors, probably it would have been less severe. But seemingly there is no agreement, you know, because when Lebanon talks about restructuring a debt, you cannot restructure anything without creditors' approval. Uh, seemingly, it's you know, it's it's a speech full of ideas, um, and and there are no concrete steps so far. For example, I would have liked to listen. Those who have really made Lebanon defaulting should be responsible. You know, those politicians or whoever was responsible for that uh, bad outcome, I think, should be tried or or should be at least held responsible. Plus, also the central bank has to be more transparent with us. 
there are many points in that speech which really I could not agree to. For example, about the size of the banking sector. I mean, if it's four times, let's say, the GDP or three times, what is terrible, what is bad about it? Uh, two, if you want to do some reforms of the banking system, what kind of reforms you are going to do? I am for mergers, but a merger of banks, because we have 65 banks in Lebanon today. If you want to merge them into 20 banks, maybe the size of the sector would not go down. So, so what is bothering him about the size of the sector? But the, I the think problem, we have a good and efficient. Mr. Mr. Baker, I think the problem most probably for, for people watching is how does this sort of leave Lebanon financially? Because obviously if the prime minister is saying that, you know, we need the money to buy the basic commodities for the Lebanese people themselves, there will be no money um, you might say, available for infrastructure or for investment. And with a default comes that sort of psychological problem on the international front where credit, uh, where investors don't want to invest in your country because firstly, they don't know what they're investing in. And secondly, they don't know what they're going to get their return, uh, what return they're going to get, uh, and whether you're true to your word uh, as politicians and as bureaucrats. And it's a about that sort of reputation that is tarnished, and that will upset the Lebanese people uh, on, on the surface, won't it? Of course, the Lebanese reputation has been tarnished. You know, what I am worried uh, about is, is not that the current creditor are going to sue us. I am worried about we, we could not find future creditors, because now with Lebanon not paying its debt, many uh, potential creditors are going to say, why should I lend to Lebanon if Lebanon doesn't pay? Plus, if I do lend it, I will lend it at a much higher interest rate, which may, will make the debt even much costlier to us. Um, you know, th that's why from the beginning, I found the speech empty of solutions, full of description, which would be great for somebody who doesn't know Lebanon at all. He would probably learn about us. But uh, it's, it, I, sh I would have expected much more solution. Uh, and what is really missing is the current government, how hard it's going to work. Now, the current government has been in for two months, of course, but hasn't started working on the main files. And I think it's time to go deep into work and give us solution and work on solution. And, and this has not started yet. Um, you know, the international community is not going to wait for us until we wake up. I think I, I probably could say this current speech is a wake up call, but I don't see uh, so far the government has waken up yet. Well, we shall see what does happen in, in the coming months for the moment. Uh, Louis Habeke, thanks for joining us from Beirut, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.